what is selected? Well, what this says is groups of neurons are selected. As you know, that neurons come in two flavors, excitatory and inhibitory, and to have individual selection, I believe, given the variance, would be out of the question. So it's neuronal group selection. And I want to give you an idea of what the complexity is by using a formulation, a model, by Eugenia Shikhevich, Joe Galli, and myself, in which we placed on a sphere 100,000 spiking neurons, excitatory and inhibitory in the proper ratios, and hooked up with reentrant connections. And we asked, would there be spontaneous group formation even in the presence of just input noise? And if you look real hard, you will see these essential clusters. And if you look at the analysis, you'll see that there are lifetimes of these groups, which in fact disappear or don't, depending upon the inputs and what have you. I won't go into detail, but imagine this is 10 times slower than what is happening in your brain right now. And if we're talking cortex, we're talking 30 billion neurons at least, and a million billion connections. If you counted one per second, you just finished counting 32 million years later. And we heard about a graph. Well, anyone who looks at graph theory would know, for example, that if you have a graph of 32 vertices and 256 edges, you have 10 to the 700th possible graphs and God knows how many vertices we have inside here. Well, let me provide a little bit of evidence for neuronal group selection. This is a beautiful experiment done by Wolf Singer in Frankfurt with his colleague, Gray, in which he impaled a single visual neuron in the occipital cortex and registered these spikes. And at the same time, he was measuring uh, local field potentials of maybe 100 surrounding neurons. And when he passed this through a computer, and looked at the spike correlation with the troughs of the local field potentials, they lined up beautifully. If he took this signal, which was to this cat, a moving bar going in that direction, if he took it away, the whole thing collapsed. So it did self-organize, and it was, I believe, neuronal groups. Most strikingly, to me at least, is the work of Michael Mertzenich at UCSF, who looked at the receptive fields of neurons when he tapped uh, and looked at the somatosensory cortex of the owl monkey, tapped on the various parts of the finger, smooth, glabrous, and hairy, and made a map. And here are the maps of the digits, and the dark ones are the hairy parts in the back. Well, when he cut the nerve, the median nerve that serves this finger on the glabrous side, this finger, and half of this finger, immediately, before it could even get into the skull, uh, eventually within an hour, he could see a huge change in this map, in which all the map boundaries change smoothly. It's very hard to explain this result if there are not recruitment of neuronal groups. Indeed, if he had a monkey tap 100,000 times with this finger, it would, as it were, steal neurons from the other representations, and no two of these individual animals was alike. Well, this may confute what I've said, because it looks like a picture of uh, a computer diagram. It is, in fact, uh, Fellman and Van Essen's early picture of the 33 or so different visual centers in the macaque monkey, hooked up by millions of fibers, most of them reciprocal and therefore capable of undergoing reentrant connectivity. And uh, here's the one that we just looked at, V1. And you go up here, and the striking thing is this. It formulates a problem we all have to struggle with called the binding problem. Uh, how does the brain bind together the responses of these functionally segregated areas to one or more objects when there is no executive supervisor? The answer, we believe, is reentry. And uh, this is the idea blown up now, as you see here, that inputs can come into this map and, in, and inputs to that map. But if they have these massively parallel connections, at least stochastically, certain mapping will occur among the maps, and that will cause synchrony of firing. Well. Um, let me give you a, another model, which was done at the Institute, and uh, show you, this time a hundred times slower in the brain, what happens when you feed a gestalt into the model of a reentrant cortical system. The stimulus will be figure and ground, again a gestalt figure, and you'll see nothing here until it moves, and then you'll see this rhomboid. There you go. And that's fed into the structure, and we see what happens to the synaptic strengths and the patterns of response of neuronal groups. Well, here you go. Remind yourself that it's moving very slowly so you can see what's going on. Here's the random background. And eventually, you'll see that there are correlated firings 
amongst these things. Uh, I've arranged it so you see the rhomboid, but that doesn't matter. It's the coherence and the correlation that count.